An 18th century English poet, Alexander Pope was best known for his works such as Essay on Criticism, The Rape of the Lock, The Dunciad, and uh, his various uh, translations of Homer. Born in 1688 to Alexander Pope Sr. and Edith Pope, who were both Catholics. He was related to the famous miniature painter Samuel Cooper, as his uh, aunt was married to him. Pope's education was affected because of the Test Acts of the 17th century, which uh, forbade the Catholics um, from teaching, from uh, getting educated, attending a university, voting, or even holding a uh, public office. He was taught to read by his aunt. He also went to a couple of Catholic schools before his family moved to their estate uh, very close to the Windsor Forest in 1700. This move came about because of this uh, strong anti-Catholic sentiments which did not allow them to live within uh, 10 miles approximately 16 kilometers of London. Uh, Pope would then go on to describe this countryside in his work called Windsor Forest. By this time, his formal education ended. He educated himself. He read the great works of uh, satirists such as uh, Horace and the epics of uh, Homer, Virgil, and also quite a lot of English greats such as Geoffrey Chaucer, uh, William Shakespeare, etc. He started reading works of not just English, but also other languages such as uh, French, Latin, uh, Greek, etc. And he came in contact with some of the contemporary writers such as William Wycherley, William uh, Congreve, Samuel Gurth, William Trumbull and William Walsh. Pope is also famous for earning a living out of uh, out of writing and one of the first writers to do that. In 1709, he published his Pastorals, part of Tunson's uh, Poetic Miscellanies. He became quite famous because of this and this success was followed by an essay on criticism which came out in 1711 which again became quite popular. In the same year, he came in contact with some of the Tory writers such as Jonathan Swift, John Gay, Thomas Parnell and John Arbuthnot. These writers came together to form a satirical scribblerous club. That The aim of the club was to satirize the ignorance, the pedantry of the times, of the, of the times in England through a fictional character known as Martinus Scribblerus. He also came in contact with quite a few Whig writers such as Joseph Addison and Sir Richard Steele, again very popular writers of the time. It was in 1713 that his Windsor Forest was published. Uh, remember we spoke about Win Windsor Forest. This work achieved great success again and he continued to work with Addison and Steele, especially on their uh, periodical The uh, Spectator, uh, while also working for The Guardian. He also contributed to Addison's play Cato. Uh, at about the same time, he began to work on a very ambitious uh, project uh, which took quite a long time for him to finish. Starting in uh, 1715, it went on all the way up to 1720. He worked on the translations of the Iliad. I mentioned that Pope was considered first full-time English writer. He did this by his subscription fees that he charged for his translation of uh, Homer's work and also for his editions of uh, William Shakespeare. From 1733 to 38, he worked on the imitations of uh, Horace. Now, he took this model so to satirize the conditions in England under George III. He also added his original poem in the introduction called An Epistle to Dr. Arbuthnot. After 1738, Pope did not write a lot. In fact, he uh, had an idea to write his work called Brutus. However, uh, only the opening line survived. We do not have the entire, uh, the rest of the poem. He probably couldn't complete it. Some of the major works of this time, uh, during his later part of, the, uh, of, of his life, was uh, expanding his, his older works, The Danciad, and the book four appeared in 1742. Pope breathed his last on May 30th, 1744, and was buried at St. Mary's Church, Twinkenham. <music>Let's now look at some of the characteristics of his poetry. Alexander Pope belongs to the neoclassical time. It is called neoclassical because the writers of the time wanted to go back to the classical writers, revive their works. The neoclassical period is divided into three. The first one is the restoration period. The second is the Augustan age to which Alexander Pope belongs. The Augustan age is also called the age of Pope and it uh, goes on to show his place in English literature. The Augustan age is called so because it is named after King Augustus and the writers were influenced by the Augustan writers such as Horace and Virgil. One of the important points in his poetry are the heroic couplets, a form that was introduced by Geoffrey Chaucer but was uh, made famous by Pope. He began to deploy the heroic couplet 
right from uh, his early works such as an essay on criticism. Another important of his characteristic is the morality and the values. If we look at some of his works such as the essay on criticism or the danciad, he explores the ideas of morality, of virtue and poetry which seem to be some of his favorite topics. He also makes uh, a connection between authoring these poems and being a man of virtue. He believed that the qualities that made a great poet, a great writer, are the same that made a great person, which can include thoughtfulness, carefulness and strong faith. He sort of systemized his ideas, his thoughts in his uh, later work called An Essay on Man. In this poem, he talks about how man should accept that he is a link, he's sort of uh, in between uh, the angels and the beasts. And this acceptance will allow him to lead a virtuous life, a good life. Another interesting aspect of his personality, of his, uh, of his works, is the fact that he was quite critical of the other poets as well of the time. Due to his uh, lofty ideals of poetry, of poets and of uh, virtuous beings, he did not have a really high regard for some of his contemporary poets. His uh, works such as An Essay on Criticism and The Danciad are an intense verbal attack on uh, some of the other poets whom he considered inferior. In his work The Danciad, he refers to them as hacks, scribblers and dunces, means a dull person, somebody who's slow at learning. Due to this constant tirade against some of the other writers, though he did have a very high position and was respected for his contribution to poetry, he was not very popular in the poetic circles. Another important feature, rather the most important feature of his poetry, is the satire and imitation that he brought through his works. One of the most well-known poems of his is The Rape of the Lock, which is a careful imitation of other poems such as the epic and is also a satire on the contemporary society of England. A similar uh, poem that he wrote later on in his life was imitation of uh, Horace which is a satire on uh, like I mentioned earlier the society of England under George III. Alright, let's look at uh, some of his major works. The first one that we look at is an essay on criticism. This was uh, published in 1711. However, he had started writing, he'd begun writing much earlier. In fact, he wrote this poem for three years before it was finally published. We can call this an ambitious work because during this time, the heroic couplet was not a very popular form of uh, poetry and Pope's ambition, Pope's idea was to establish his own identity as a poet and a critic. Many critics say that the poem is, is a response to the debate of the time of whether the poems should follow the classical style or should be natural. He begins his work with a discussion of the standard rules that govern poetry and then goes on to discuss the classical writers themselves. He also discusses certain laws that a critic should follow, adding that critics play a major role in helping the poets in their work. The final section of an essay on criticism discusses the moral qualities and virtues inherent in a poet or a critic that makes him an ideal man. Next, we talk about The Rape of the Lock, by far the most famous work of Pope. It was first published in 1712 with a revised edition appearing two years later, that is in 1714. It is said to be a true story written in the mock epic form. It satirizes a high society quarrel between Arbella Firma and Lord Peter who snipped off a lock of hair without her permission. In this poem, trivial things assume dominance and and purchase artifacts replace human agency. The final work that we will discuss for today is the Danciad, which appeared in three versions between 1728 to 1740. It is again a mock heroic narrative poem which celebrates goddess dullness and the progress of her chosen agents as they bring decay and tastelessness into the kingdom of Great Britain. In fact, if you look at Alexander Pope's works, right after The Rape of the Lock, pretty much all of his works are a satire of the contemporary society. Alright, so here is a list of Pope's other works.